Hello and welcome to the Switzer Spring Property Special. And today I'm talking to a pretty special guy, a guy by the name of Ben Collier, who's worked with McGrath State Agents for something like 23 years. Ben, thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks very much, Peter. Now, Ben, I've known you a long time. You've you've kind of matured before my very eyes. Um, tell us about your your history at McGrath. I was very lucky to be given an opportunity pretty much straight out of school uh, with a with a very much up and coming real estate agent and agency by the name of John McGrath and McGrath Estate mm. Agency. He was up and coming then? Very much so. And so I've been very fortunate to be part of that journey and ride over the last 23 years. Mm. What, what do you think has been the, the greatest lesson you've picked up working with John? A lot of people go to hear him speak and hang off every word, but you've had the, the pleasure of working with him for 23 years. How have you changed as a person or as a business you know, um, person? Oh, look, I, th th he's taught me many things, some of which are never take anything for granted, mm. and that everybody has to start somewhere. So, and in the 23 years, I've virtually got clients that have been part of that journey with me, and they've, as they've progressed through their careers, they've literally taken me along for the ride. Mm. So if you've done a great job for someone early on, then they'll want to use you again and again and again. So it's been an interesting process. Yeah, it's about building a really good brand, I think. Indeed. All right, so tell us what's happening in the eastern suburbs residential market. Well, what we've noticed certainly over the last four to six months, uh, certainly the, the market under one and a half million, we've started to see that starting to slow in terms of numbers. Uh, like, for example, you might have had a, a two-bedroom apartment where six months ago you may have had anywhere between 25 and 35 groups come and inspect the property, mm. whereas now it's 10 to 12 groups. Mm. Uh, whereas we might have had eight buyers deep at the auction, it's now three to four. Mm. Um, the numbers are still holding up relatively well. We have seen clearance rates come back a little, uh, although we are still experiencing around 75, 76% clearance in our, in our market. Mm. I guess the message there is, if you were a, a buyer who was turned off by the, the excessive turning up of potential buyers, there may well be some opportunities as the market just sort of slows down a little bit. I couldn't agree with you more. Mm. And uh, I think that, I think the other thing that people were starting to become a little jaded with, everyone was finding it difficult to keep up with the market. Mm. And, you know, an agent who would be hoping to, you know, be advising the market to their best ability, saying, well, we think it's somewhere around eight, mm. only to have it sell mm. for 950. Um, so now buyers are starting to say, oh, if you're quoting eight, even though you might have 800 on the agreement, mm. uh, the eyes are going to sell for 950 mm. when it's 800. But markets change, and this is the, the one thing that a lot of buyers don't understand. Tell us about the, the higher end. You talked about under one and a half. What about above, above that? Yeah, we're seeing a lot more activity and certainly turnover at that level. Mm. Um, I, th I, th I think that's also combined with the fact that there is a, certainly a shortage of stock. Mm. So there aren't as many properties on the market in spring above four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million mm. to what we would typically expect for this time of the year. So, which is quite interesting. Have you worked out why? Uh, no, look, I'm not sure. I think mm. uh, it's one of those things. That people are on. Uh, there, there, there's a bit of. Uh, I think some people, to a degree, unsure whether now is the right time to sell or mm. not, and they're also worried. Well, if I do sell, even though I may sell for ten percent more than what I was expecting. Mm which is fairly significant if you're talking, say, $8 million. Um, my problem is, what will I then be able to find? Yeah, to I was going to say, where else do you go to when you're in the eastern suburbs? Where else do you go to? Well, yeah, sometimes they'll go, they may scale down to apartment living mm. or uh, a terrace in Paddington Malara mm. or somewhere like that. But that seems to be the problem at the moment is the stock levels at that level. Okay. So let's talk, talk about who is buying and where. Let's talk about downsizes. That's a, a trend we're seeing. Um, where are they going to in the eastern suburbs? Downsizes typically scaling down from large homes from, say, the Upper Lower North Shore or Vaucluse, Belby Hill, tend to migrate towards, say, apartment-style living, uh, whether that be from Double Bay through to the city. Uh, and or certainly terrace style living in Paddington Mullara. Mm. So certainly um, I would say anywhere around 80% of all sales above $4 million in village Paddington Mullara is pretty much sold to downsizers. So mm. it's a fairly significant market. Okay, so families and upgraders, what's happening there? Uh, they typically, a, well, it's, it's been an interesting progression there. Uh, whereas normally if someone was living in an apartment or a terrace, they would then typically migrate out towards the suburban areas, whether that be beachside, parkside, mm. or or Vaucluse. They want backyards and swimming pools for their kids. Indeed, exactly mm. right. 
However, we've seen uh, people now making a lifestyle choice to raise a family, whether that be in an apartment or in a terrace. Mm. And a lot of those people are people that may have once worked abroad, worked overseas in Hong Kong or London, where they're used to uh, apartment style living. And it's for them what they place more importance on is not necessarily the backyard, it's more or less proximity to things. Okay, Chinese buyers, we hear a lot about that. What, what are they actually looking for? They're certainly very active in the top end, but typically they're more focused on uh, properties that are on the harbour foreshore, mm. uh, certainly eastern suburbs, that's where they look, and obviously proximity to schools. Mm. Uh, views are very important to them, and also houses that were recently built or renovated. Mm. One of the common questions I'll ask when they come through was when was the house built? Mm. So if it was a house that was built uh, you know, 30 years ago and hasn't been renovated recently, they tend to shy away from that. Okay, and what about the idea of, uh, and John's mentioned this in the, the McGrath um, report, uh, about um, we're seeing uh, Sydney sizes act like New Yorkers, like the Manhattan effect. Uh, are you experiencing that in your area? Yeah, well, I think now that we're having uh, greater choice with, due to the developments that are being built, you know, such as um, wharf-style apartments, mm. high-rise-style apartments, uh, we're certainly seeing, uh, you know, the downsizer market focus on those mm. particular types of properties. Mm. Okay, Ben, one final question. You know, when you think about um, people trying to buy in the eastern suburbs, often very hard, there's often that ripple effect, go to the next suburb. Are you... F finding that some people can't quite make the eastern suburbs so they, they're rolling into the, ne the next suburb? Yeah, well we certainly saw that in Paddington. Mm. Uh, whereas I think Paddington lagged the market uh, for some time, uh, in general that is, mm. because we started to see areas such as Darlinghurst, Surrey Hills, even Redfern, um, have a, a, an upward trend far greater than that of Paddington. Um, whereas I think now people are starting to see that Paddington offers good value mm. by comparison to those areas. Mm. Uh, so we're starting to see a shift back towards Paddington as a result. Okay, Ben, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks so much, Peter. Thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Switzer.